Thank you for clicking on another video. In today's video, as you can see by the title, I am going to be <laughs> showing you, trying to show you, how to trick people into thinking that you can bake. I am not a professional baker or chef by any means. I have been baking since I was probably like nine. Me and my sisters used to make surprise birthday cakes for my family members. My sisters kind of got a bit bored of it as we got older, but I just loved it and I became like the family baker. I was never particularly any good. I would just follow recipes. And then at university, I started watching a few YouTube videos and just picking up tips and tricks here and there to make my cakes better. It's not as hard as you'd think. If you love baking and you just want to give your cakes a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of, ooh, that's impressive, then keep watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'm uploading loads of new videos. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know what you think. Join me on my Instagram. I literally post my whole life on there. My Facebook and check out my blog for more recipes. And without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first most important thing or kind of most important thing when it comes to baking is choosing a recipe. If you want to trick people into thinking you can bake, then you need a good recipe. If your map is wrong, you're never going to arrive at your destination. Make sure that you have a decent recipe. In this day and age where there's Google and YouTube, you pretty much can't go wrong. I only do recipes when the rating is like 4.2 out of 5 stars and above. And when that rating is by more than 10 people, when it's in the double digits. That's how I know that the general population think that this cake or the recipe or whatever tastes good and they would recommend it. If you're doing a recipe that's been rated 2 out of 5, don't be surprised when your cake tastes like a 2 out of 5, okay? In this particular video, I am making an Oreo cake. I've made an Oreo cake before and I felt like it could have been a little bit better, so I've actually tweaked this recipe. So this one, I actually don't know if I'd recommend it yet because it's the first time I'm making this ratio of ingredients, changing it up a bit, trying to get it a little bit lighter, a little bit fluffier. My second tip to tricking people into thinking you can bake is to stick to the recipe. I know that my might sound obvious but I know what we can be like as humans we think oh all I've got is self raising flour but it says plain flour never mind no mind if the recipe says plain flour use plain flour if the recipe says baking powder don't stop it for bicarbonate of soda use baking powder they are two different things and they will act differently so I can't stress this enough if you deviate from the recipe don't be surprised when you get a deviated cake, okay? So what goes in is what will be in the cake. So make sure that you stick to the recipe. If it says to beat the eggs separately or to divide the yolk or something complex, then do that. If you can't do what it says to do, then choose a different recipe or YouTube and search the different methods that it describes, whether it's whisking or beating or whatever it is. You know, you can watch a video on that for it to make more sense for you, but just stick to the recipe. Once you have the recipe and once you've chosen to stick to it, you want to check out your oven. You want to make sure that your oven is clean. If your oven is dirty, for example, if you've made some other food in there and some has dripped down onto the bottom surface, then that food can burn, increase the temperature of the oven. And before you know it, you are baking your cake at 220 degrees instead of 180. I don't know if it actually gets that much hotter. But basically, use a clean oven and preheat your oven, which I'm about to do now. Always preheat your oven because that will affect the way that the cake cooks. There's a difference between putting a cake into a cold oven and waiting five minutes for it to heat up uh, and putting a cake into a hot oven that is already at the temperature for it to start rising, baking, you catch my drift. So I'm just going to set the oven right now. As I've said, I've been baking for quite a while now, so I do have a standing mixer. I've made a couple wedding cakes now and I thought it was worth the investment. They're not too expensive. This one was like 60 quid. I was not about to splash out on a KitchenAid. They are super expensive. Um, but I'll put the link to this standing mixer in the description box if you want to pick one up. If not, literally don't worry about it. You do not need a standing mixer to make a decent cake. I've actually only had this for about six weeks, so all the other cakes I've made before that I did with a handheld whisker. That is an electronic handheld whisker that you hold and that things move by themselves. Um, you can use a hand whisk. That's just manual labour, man. You'll just be there for hours trying to get something that a machine could do a lot quicker. So hand mixers, they're only like a tenner. I do recommend that you get one of those. If not, then a physical whisk should be fun. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started making the cake. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my butter. I will share the recipe with you if it tastes good. If it doesn't taste good, I won't share it because I am not a liar. <laughs> um, so yeah, if the recipe for this cake is in the description box, then it turned out pen. If not, then just just leave it. Um, I actually don't even know if all these ingredients will fit in this tub, to be honest, so I might have a little problem. But I've got 400 grams of butter, and I'm going to start off by beating the butter. How great is this? My hands are free to do whatever. So 
thought I'd show you close up how white the butter gets. So that is it before I've beat it and that is it afterwards. So really mixing it until you get a nice white non-yellow butter. Okay, so once the butter is nice and white and fluffy, I'm going to add in the caster sugar. I'm going to add in two teaspoons of vanilla essence. Another thing that's important to do with a standing mixer particularly, which is kind of annoying to be honest, if you've got a handheld mixer you can count your blessings now, um, is to just scrape down the sides. So making sure that you're scraping down the sides um, so that all of the mix is getting mixed together. Otherwise you'll get a very thin layer of, you know, stuff that hasn't really been combined properly. I'm going to add in my eggs a little bit at a time. Follow whichever recipe you're doing, basically, this is just the one that I'm doing. If you find that the mixture is curdling when you add in the eggs to the butter, you can just add in a little bit of flour, um, just to make it not curdle so much. Adding in the cream. And the milk. I'm going to add in some baking powder pinch of salt, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and the flour. Mixing it nice and slowly, you don't want flour going everywhere. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> don't stress if you make a mistake, it's really not that deep. You're trying to trick people into thinking you can bake, not actually be a professional baker, so yeah, don't stress. So my Oreos are supposed to be crushed and they're not crushed yet, so I'm just gonna batter them with this. <laughs> A little bit broken down, you know, not fully confident in who they are. Grab a wooden spoon, mix that up a little bit more, making sure all is combined really well. I'm gonna see this a little bit closer up. Come on, let me show you. I'm pouring in the Oreos, and I'm just gonna very gently combine them. You don't want them fully mixed in. You don't want them mixed in too much. Um, because that'll just make the cake way too sweet. You just want to just about combine them so that they're evenly spread but not too broken down. And that is as mixed up as I want it. Okay, so the cake mix is sorted and you might be thinking we're on a home run, but wait. These next tips are so crucial if you want to trick people into thinking that you can bake. You can have the world's best recipe, perfectly combined according to the instructions, a perfectly clean oven, but if your casing isn't right, if your perfect cake falls apart when you take it out of the tin, if it rises unevenly, oh, the heartbreak. I've been there, it's happened to me, don't let it happen to you. So I'm gonna show you how I make sure that my cakes come out of the oven and survive. Survive a lot, it is a lot that we put cakes through and we need them to come through strong. So I love to use good tins. Now when I say good tins, I just mean good tins. I don't mean expensive tins. You know me. These were like four pounds from Home Bargains and um, they are eight inch tins. They are non-stick, really good non-stick and they have a removable bottom pan. Now with these you can literally just push the cake up and out and you don't have to worry about pulling the corners away because that's super stressed. Now as though that wasn't enough, I like to be 100% sure that my cake is surviving this torture. I actually add in um, some baking paper at the bottom. This might sound a bit fussy, uh, but it's really not that hard. Just get some baking paper which is super cheap and what I do is I grab the bottom of the tray, place it on the drawer around it, cut it out and stick it in. This next tip probably has a few baking flaws, but I actually use spray light to grease my pans. I can't be bothered spreading butter on a pan. So I literally just spritz the pan with some non-stick spray. Careful though, because I do have some cake tins which you're not supposed to use this on. But honestly, I don't really care. Spritz that on. I stick that to the bottom of the pan. And I spritz some more again. Now you might be thinking that is all well and good, but trust me, this tip is life changing. It is life changing, it will save you so much cake mix and it will make your cakes look bomb. Cake, what are they called, cake warmers? Basically, the problem with cakes is that you have all the metal surrounding the outside of the cake mix, right? When you pour it into the tin. So you have all this cake mix on the edge, right by the metal, right by the heat. But the cake mix on the middle is a bit further away from the heat. So that's why cakes tend to rise in the middle. So the outside cooks quicker than the inside. Now what these amazing things do, they're literally just 
strips of thick fabric that you soak in water and you wrap around the cakes in. What they do is they cool the edges of the cake and cause the cake to rise evenly, meaning when you take the cake out of the oven, you get a flat top and soft doughy sides. You don't get that thick hard crust. This will prevent that. Now, I bought these online. I will totally pop the link in the description box if you want to get some. But you don't need to buy some. If you're like, Sarah, why do I have to buy a whole freaking cake shop to make a decent cake? You don't. What you can do is grab some foil and some paper towels and I will show you how to make some cake strips to keep your cakes perfect. I've got some paper towel here, just literal normal paper towels. I am going to soak them in a little bit of water. You don't need a crazy amount of water. Um, just soak them like so. Then I'm gonna take that paper towel and fold it in on itself because it needs to be long enough to reach all the way around the cake tin. Um, you can use more paper towels if you want. I'm just using a little bit because this is just an example. I'm gonna use my real ones. But I did use these and they work just as well. Paper towel, um, fold it over, and then just grab some foil. Put the paper towel inside that, like so, and just fold it over. Now what you want is basically a band of wet water inside. You then take your cake tin. Obviously mine, I've made this really crappy and really quickly just to show you, so it's not long enough, so make a longer one. But then you would just wrap it around the cake tin. Sorry, if I had a smaller cake tin, which I do somewhere, but I can't really be able to show you. You just wrap it around and stick it on and pop the cake mix in the tin and pop it in the oven, and that works just as well. But seeing as I've already been bougie enough to get some real ones, we're gonna use those. Now I've soaked these in a bowl of water um, just to make sure they are fully saturated, but you do not want them to be dripping, okay? So I'm gonna squeeze all the water out of those. Oh, oh, that's going everywhere. Et voila! Now I'm just gonna do that with the other tins. You're welcome. So the cake tins are sorted and wrapped. Now something that can be really impressive when you make a cake is having even layers. So when you cut into a multi-layer cake, having each layer the same height it's just an OCD person's dream. I love slicing into a cake and seeing those even layers. I'm not gonna lie, I judge cakes when they have uneven layers because now that I know, I can't unknow. The way of doing that is to weigh how much mix you put in each tin, making sure that they rise the same, they're the same height. I cannot be bothered, so I'm gonna eyeball it with a scoop. Be mindful about how much I'm putting in each one. So that is like one scoop in each. And I'm going to keep going until I run out of mix. I'm just going to smooth out the layers with this little paddle thing, but you can use a knife or whatever. Grab a toothpick and just dip that in the middle, seeing how high it comes out. I'm going to grab another toothpick, dip that in the middle, see how high it comes out. Approximately the same height. Looks like they are all around the same height, so that is good enough for me. And now to finally put them in the oven. <laughs> And I'm definitely going to set the timer in case I forget. I've just gone to check on the cake and realised that the heat was way too high. And I've literally burnt the cake in a video of how to trick people into thinking you can bake. Uh, which is honestly kind of tragic and devastating. And I don't think you should listen to a word that I say because I just burnt the cake. Um, so what I've done is I've turned down the heat and I've switched the one from the top rack to the bottom rack. You want to be careful with turning down the heat mid cook because that can make the cake like fall or whatever. Also perfect for this video because this video is all about how to trick people into thinking you can bake. Even though I burnt the cakes and made them cook way too much on the surface and not all the way through, these cakes, by God's grace, thank you Jesus, will still be bomb. People will still love them. They are still going to be well impressive and I cannot wait to show you how, how I make up for literally burning the cake. It doesn't matter if you burn them, you can totally get away with it um, and I will show you how when they are eventually cooked. <laughs> Sorry guys, my bad. Okay, so I feel like I can finally take the cakes out. Um, they are not actually too burnt as you can see, they don't look too bad, I've definitely done worse. But I don't really know that they're done because the timing's got a bit messed up. But the way I can tell, it's just by touching it. And you can see that it's a little bit bouncy, a little bit springy. Another way that you can check if they're done is to just grab a toothpick 
and pop it in the deepest part of the cake and if that comes out clean, which it has, then the cake is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the other two out as well. And funnily enough, when I look inside my oven, I can actually see that it wasn't fully clean. So that bit has been smoking. That little bit at the bottom has been smoking while I've been cooking it. I didn't see that when I opened my oven because I had these trays in there at the time, which looked okay. Yeah, I had a dirty oven and that is why the temperature just went way hotter than it should have. That was steaming and smoking that little spot of like mess by there. It was actually steaming and smoking when I opened the oven the first time and um, because it was burning and making the oven way too hot. But whatever, I'm over it. They should be so much flat but I basically messed it up so I'm sincerely sorry but I do promise that cake sleeves really do give you a flat cake as long as you don't make the oven way too hot you can check out my video when I made my friend's wedding cake to see how flat they should have been but they're not too bad you know it's not like a massive dome which is what would have happened um, without the cake sleeves okay so now we're gonna move on to a part of baking which can really scare a lot of people which is taking the cakes out of the tins first you just want to remove your cake sleeves then what you want to do is use some cooling racks now these these I've never actually gone out and intentionally bought, they generally come with ovens so if you have different shelves and you're only using one shelf to cook the cake, take the other shelf out and leave it out so that it's nice and cool. Um, so I've got three of those. Now the reason cooling racks are so important is because hot things tend to release hot air so there's a lot of hot moisture coming off the cake in the form of gas right now if you put that against a cold surface like the table then i'd get the hot gas condensing on the table and actually forming moisture which the cake would then sit in and become wet with a soggy bottom you do not want to let the cake sweat aka to get condensation on it um, so raising up the cake from the platform a little bit reduces that contact with the moisture that is formed during the process of condensation i hope that makes sense did that make sense is that scientifically correct i haven't done gcse science for a hot minute um, so what i'm going to do is start with the ugliest looking cake and what i do is i just get my gloves on i literally just push against the bottom just very gently let me show you a little bit closer i just very gently ease and just like you know just tease it see if any bits are sticking but actually that looks like on all sides of the cake it's actually moving pretty easily and um, what you can do is get a knife and simply go around the cake I don't like doing that I used to do that back in the day but now um, with my good pans and the loose bottom I really don't need to do that and just like rise out like a like a phoenix you know it rises rise it all the way up keep pushing and I'm just gonna let the hot cake tin sit on my arm like so so I'm not actually burning my arm or you could just wear sleeves then I'm gonna grab one of my cake racks I'm gonna place it like that on the back and I'm just going to flip it over now once that is flipped I mean I generally am okay with heat you might want to use a knife or something I'm literally just gonna lift the bottom of the pan up again I'm going to peel the paper off Oh, that looks so good. Now I just want to show you what the cake sleeves actually did. Look how light and soft the sides of that cake are. There are no thick crusts. It is cooked so evenly. It's, it's just great. It's really great. Um, so I'm going to let that sit. And that is actually pretty flat once I've taken it out. It's a lot flatter than I gave myself credit for. So these aren't too bad. But either way, I will show you how I would have salvaged a burnt cake anyway. I actually love to let my cakes cool upside down because then it just evens out that dome shape of the rising. And my cakes are cooked and cooling. Yay, they smell incredible. I can't wait to try them. Next tip into tricking people into thinking you can bake is to let those cool. Don't even think. Don't even touch. Don't even look at them until they are 100% cool okay if you try and decorate a warm cake you just you may as well just throw your cake to the sparrows just throw it to the dogs and ask them to decorate it okay so so make sure it's cool you do not want butter icing or any kind of icing coming near a warm cake let it cool i'm actually going to let those sit overnight maybe i think i'm kind of tired and it's getting pretty late so i might decorate them tomorrow and that basically concludes the baking part of making a cake however baking is like the least important part <laughs> okay it's not the least important part but decorating a cake in my opinion is where the money's at decorating a cake in certain ways will trick people the most into thinking you can bake you can literally make like the world's worst cake make it look cute 
and people will still be like wow she's a great baker on your instagram and for all they know it tasted like rocks but they won't know because they won't try it so <laughs> decorating a cake well is very important there are methods that i could use to decorate that like i used to back in the day that would just make it look like trash but I've graduated. I've graduated the how to trick people into thinking you can bake school. How H T T P I T Y C B S. Congrats. You're on your way to graduation. But yeah, I will see you when we decorate this cake in like, well, like now, I guess, in like two seconds. Ready?